Hi everyone. Um, I've been asked to prepare a video for you about uh, using Shemstock and articulating paper uh, in the clinic. And uh, we're focusing on using these products uh, before and after the procedure has been done. So I want to kind of go through that and establish why we're doing it so that uh, we're all on the same page using the same things and that the faculty can uh, evaluate your work appropriately. We're going to be establishing uh, what the occlusal scheme is prior to and after the procedure. The materials that we're going to use uh, are a Shemstock AccuFilm 2, Bosch, Vaseline, cotton rolls, articulating paper holder. Now, the first thing we want to do is check our occlusion prior to starting our procedure. And it's important to do that so that at the end of the procedure, we know what we started with. I'm going to start with Shemstock. And uh, I'm going to go through and just evaluate uh, which teeth uh, have but a hold, an actual tug back or a hold, not a drag. Go ahead and bite, hold. Okay, so here's a hold. Now, as I tug on this uh, Shemstock, it's not sliding through the two teeth that are holding it. It's actually holding. Open. And we want to go through and evaluate all of the teeth that way. Uh, when you get done doing this, write down which teeth held and uh, so that we know which ones were the, the, the ones that hold and uh, the other ones are all the ones that slide. Go ahead and bite. Open. Bite. There's one that slides. So I don't care about the ones that slide, just the ones that hold. The next thing we're going to do is listen to the sound that the patient makes when they tap, tap, tap. So if you go ahead and tap, 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 perfect. Now that I have that kind of recorded in my head, um, I'm going to try to remember that sound so that at the end of my procedure, I'm going to ask the patient to do these same things again. Also, we want to go through and, and uh, mark the teeth. You know, I think it's important for us to not only use the shem stock, but also to check with articulating paper what our tooth looks like from our existing occlusal scheme. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's mark it. I'm going to check tooth number 19, so I'm going to dry top and bottom. Bite. Tap, tap, tap. Open. And I'm going to look at the occlusion. Let's, let's pretend I'm doing tooth number 18 instead. So I'm going to be evaluating tooth number 18. And so in, uh, in our view here, we can see that uh, she has a good mark on tooth number 18 on the mesial buccal cusp. So that's important information. Now down inside where her filling is, there are no marks on the existing filling that she has. So we're going to pretend that we're taking that filling out and going to put a new filling in. And when we get done, what I'd like to see is um, that mark that's on tooth number 18 mesial buccal cusp all right, something that I do want to talk about is if you're not getting good marks on the teeth, uh, you might want to consider drying them good, like I've shown you with a 2x2 two two gauze. Uh, and you might also want to put Vaseline on the surface of the articulating paper. So I've already applied some Vaseline on both sides of the articulating paper. Go ahead and tap, tap, tap. Open. And your marks may very well be easier to see and more identifiable to you um, if you used dried teeth and uh, Vaseline on your articulating paper. So that's a suggestion. You might want to consider doing that. And I would also like to see, go ahead and bite and hold. There's a hold. That's a tug back. So that hold, I want to check and see that I have that same hold when I get done. Open. Now I also like to go to the opposite side of the mouth and find my holds. Bite. There's a hold on the second bicuspid, bite, on the first molar, and bite, and the second molar. So when I get done doing my restoration today, I want to have all of these holds match. And I want uh, the articulating paper to be at least the same as it is before I start. Okay, now the purpose behind all of this is uh, called force distribution. And in force distribution, we want that force to be balanced so that the load is placed on as many teeth as we can have load placed on rather than just one set of teeth. Two teeth holding, a top tooth and a bottom tooth holding throughout the entire mouth uh, isn't the best result. 
you want to have as many teeth providing holds which balances out the force as you can get. So if you find that you only have a very limited amount of holds to begin with, then you might need to consider having an occlusal analysis done through your faculty and possibly myself uh, prior to doing any of your restorative procedures so that we can balance out this load and balance out that force before we even begin doing restorations. If you have uh, that as one of your red flags, make a note of it. If you have other red flags that have gone on in the mouth, then you and your faculty should be discussing whether or not an occlusal analysis should be done or not. And if you do need one, I'd be more than happy to do that with you. Um, and there are other faculty that are prepared to help uh, accomplish that as well. So just as a review, um, let's start with some basics. Uh, when it comes to basics, uh, let's just start with uh, the teeth themselves. And we'll go to, on the top of the tooth, we'll talk about functional cusps and non-functional cusps. And you know which ones are which, I would hope by now. The functional cusps are called stamp cusps. Uh, those are the lingual cusps of upper teeth and they're the buccal cusps of lower teeth. Those are the functional cusps. And so the non-functional cusps are the other ones. On the top, they would be the buccal cusps of an upper. And on the bottom, it would be the lingual cusps of a lower. And uh, the next thing I want to review with you is something that's called working and balancing. Balancing or non-working. And so these two terms are important when it comes to identification of, of interferences. And an interference is something that happens to a tooth or with a couple of teeth. And that is where um, a functional cusp is trying to make a movement, but it is colliding on an incline with another tooth above it or below it. And so that interference needs to be identified and possibly adjusted so that you don't have one, you don't have that interference anymore. Okay, the next thing to review is that we have two rules that we use to adjust interferences. And when we adjust the interferences, what we're really adjusting is the pathway so that the, the, the cusp, the stamp cusp, can move through a pathway without colliding into an inclined surface. And the rules are called BULL, which is B-U-L-L, -L, and MUDDLE, which is M-U-D-L. Now, if I was to ask you to match up words just for the fun of it, and we were to match up functional and balancing or non-functional, so functional, non-functional, and then I was to ask you to ma match those two words up with working and balancing, or what would your logic tell you to use to match these up? And I would think that most of you are going to say that you'd match functional with working and you would match the non-functional cusp with uh, balancing or non-functional uh, interference. Actually what happens in occlusion is we use the opposite. So occlusion is backwards to your logic or your gut. And the match isn't uh, the way I just spoke of. It's functional is matched with balancing and non-functional cusps are matched with working. And now, if I was to just add one more layer of uh, matching things up, uh, what rule would you use for each of these is the next thing that you need to know. And remember back when we talked about non-functional cusps, what were they? They were the buccal of upper and lingual of lower. Well, if you say buccal of upper and lingual of lower, what does that spell? That spells B-U-L-L, -L, which is the bowl rule. So the bowl rule belongs with non-functional cusps, which we now know is working. And uh, the other rule is the only other rule that's left, and that's the muddle rule, M-U-D-L, and that belongs with functional cusps and or balancing interferences. Now that we have that all identified and reviewed, um, let's talk about what colors kind of go with what we're going to use to find these interferences. We'll use black to find our centric interferences. And we're going to use red to find our eccentric interferences. Let's pretend we've finished our restoration. And uh, now we want to go and check and find out, uh, you know, if our restoration is, is accurate or not. Um, I would suggest that you don't ask your patient, how does that feel just yet? I would avoid doing that. I would check everything yourself first. So we're at the point now where we're ready to check occlusion. We've finished our procedure and we should go through and do the things that we did in the beginning, which are to use Shemstock, to use the AccuFilm 2, 
and to listen for the way the teeth sound. So let's go ahead and we'll check with Shemstock. We're going to take our Shemstock and go ahead and bite, hold, and I have a hold on tooth number 18, open, bite, hold, I have one on 19, open, I have one on 30, and open, bite, and I have one on 31, open. So I have Shemstock holds just exactly the way they were before I did the procedure as I have after the procedure. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to dry our teeth. and use our black AccuFilm too. Bite, tap, 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 open. And we're gonna look for centric interferences. And, uh, and I do not see any centric interferences on our patient's teeth. Uh, they're just the same as they were when we started as they are now, which is good. So I have Shemstock uh, exactly the same. I have AccuFilm exactly the same. Now we're gonna do one more thing and that is if you go ahead and tap your teeth together, tap, tap, tap. Good, that's perfect. And as you listen to that sound, match it with what you listened to when you first started. If it's the same sound, then the teeth are all in balance, meaning left and right, front to back. Everything's in balance. And if it's in balance, then that's good for us. At this point in time, now that I feel comfortable in knowing that my Shemstock holds are all the same, my articulating paper looks the same as it did when I first started. And uh, the sound is the same as it was when I first started. I'm gonna ask the patient, uh, how does that feel? So how does that feel? Does the restoration feel okay to you? Feels fine. Perfect. So if it feels good to her, if it matches, if all these things match, then guess what? You're done. <laughs> That's a good thing. But you're only done as long as we have one thing on your new filling. And your new filling has to have a little mark on it in a centric stop location. Not on an incline, but a centric stop location. That would be ideal. So if you have that, now you are done. If you don't have that, and you don't have a mark anywhere on your restoration, then that means that your restoration is in hypo-occlusion. And if it's in hypo-occlusion, then I think most of us on faculty would want you to you know, correct that. Redo the filling or fix it in some form or fashion so that you do have occlusion on your new filling. Now sometimes patients, if they did not have occlusion in this area of their tooth before where you put your restoration, and now that you have your restoration there and they have a mark on it, even though you have the Shemstock holds going on everywhere you did in the beginning and your articulating marks all look the same, with the exception that you have one additional mark on your new filling now, and uh, it all sounds the same, uh, the patient may say, you know what, that still feels high. So that feels high to me, and if it does, then what should we do about it? Well, what we should do about it is, because they're numb, um, is probably wait 24 hours before we do anything. If we have the same Shemstock holds, if the articulating paper looks the same as it did in the beginning, the same occlusal scheme is going on that we did in the beginning, and the sound is the same, then I would probably wait 24 hours, wait till that Novocaine wears off, and have the patient double check with us and let us know that there is something still high or there's something wrong, or we just leave it the way it is and the patient does feel fine with it in 24 hours. Now the next thing that I want to talk about is the use of the red articulating paper. So this is red AccuFilm 2. And what we're going to use this for, the first thing we checked was using black to check for centric stops. And uh, once we've fin finished uh, looking for the centric stops and adjusted any of those, um, now we're ready to check for eccentric stops, which is done in red. So we'll go ahead and dry the teeth on both sides. So all of our teeth are dry. Go ahead and bite and hold. Now if you'll just slide your teeth left and right, or chew, and open. Now that's on the side that I was working on, and primarily that's the one I'm going to be the most concerned about. And um, if you want to do both sides, go ahead and bite and chew and slide side to side, open. Now you can look throughout the entire mouth, and again, like I said uh, at the beginning of the video, if you needed to do an occlusal adjustment, hopefully that was already done, and that uh, you've already eliminated all of the eccentric uh, interferences. 
But if this is the very first time that you're evaluating your eccentric marks, then uh, you may or may not want to adjust any of those. You'll need to talk with your faculty about that to see what the two of you want to work out. So I'm going to look on here and I'm looking for eccentric interferences. These are identified in red. Now, before you can really tell whether or not you have that, one good thing to do is once you've done your red side to side, is to put your black back in and tap, 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 open, tap, 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 open. And I'm going to superimpose black on top of red. So remember, we adjusted the centric first, and that was black. And we did that until we were happy. Uh, our filling or our restoration or our crown doesn't have any stronger of a mark on it than any other tooth. That's all the same intensity of mark. So we're happy with centric. Now we're looking at the eccentric. And for you to make a decision about what to do with eccentric is anytime you have black who's superimposed on top of the red, don't touch the black. Only look for pure red. And wherever you find the pure red, you're going to remove that. That pure red is going to be located on an inclined surface of either the buccal incline surface or the lingual incline surface of a tooth. Depending on the location, um, we're going to identify that as either a working interference or a balancing interference, like I spoke of before. So now that we have our occlusion matching, uh, the same as uh, the initial presentation that the patient came with, and everything is balanced, uh, we're pretty much done. So we've taken care of the centric and the eccentric. Uh, the paper that we used today was AccuFilm 2. It's very thin, much thinner than the other paper that's available in the clinic. The other paper is called Bosch, and the Bosch paper is only to be probably used on your REBS. So when you take the REBS, you'll be using Bosch. Otherwise, please use AccuFilm 2 in the clinic. Now, for those of you who might be watching this video, and you're not in the clinic yet, you're still in the SEM clinic, or the preclinic, uh, everything that I've talked about today is equally important and f good for you to know that you may not have had some of these lectures on all of the various components of what we chatted about, but it's good for you to know this as well. Okay, so why did we do all of this? Uh, the reason why we did all of this is if you don't use shem stock, if you don't use a, a thin AccuFilm 2 type uh, articulating paper, to find uh, if your new restoration is high or not, then your patient may very well go home with a high restoration. All of the work that we just did today will eliminate that problem altogether. You won't have to have a phone call anymore in the middle of the night or the next day. Everything will be fine. So I hope that this uh, video has been helpful for you. Uh, we want everybody to kind of be on the same page using the same products and the same ideas. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, talk with your faculty about uh, what you're doing and why you're doing it, or come and talk with myself. I'd be more than happy to go over any of the things that we've talked about today on the video. Thank you so much for being here and watching this with us and participating. Thank you.